Welcome to Johnny on Energy. We're here in Ivy, Virginia at a home that has both geothermal heating and air conditioning and solar hot water. So you're going to get to see a tour today that's really interesting hitting both of those. And I am here with Bill Ware, of High, the president of High Caliber Construction. They were the design build firm on this home. And I'm also here with Paul Risberg, who you've seen in some of our other videos, and uh, of Alt Energy, and they did the solar thermal work on this home. So Bill, tell us a little bit about the uh, the construction of the home, why you chose these technologies, how you worked with a homeowner and so forth to come up with this. Well, it's, it's interesting as we, as we go along here, there seems to be more and more demand for the so-called green products, but we've also found that our clients have a practical side to them and that they want to be able to look at a reasonable payback period for these things as well. So when we, in the very beginning we were, when we were designing this home, um, we brought in Paul with his solar hot water system. That was something that the homeowners really had their heart set on in the beginning. And um, the way Paul has things set up, that also has a reasonable payback period. I think the thing that really um, put the owners uh, on the buying the geothermal side of the fence was the fact that there is a federal tax credit now that makes the price difference between a conventional system and a geothermal system um, only maybe in this house, which is about 5,000 square feet, excuse me, 5,000 square feet, only about uh, 10,000 more in cost. So there's a very reasonable payback period, and in the process, of course, the clients are being a little more um, environmentally friendly in the process as well. Great. Paul, any thoughts on the solar thermal? Oh, that's, I know it's relatively new, and, uh, but it is in full operation. Well, it actually was a, a nice challenge for us in working with Bill to try to find um, just the, the right combination of size and capacity for the system for this house and trying to uh, what we actually ended up doing is reducing the size of the thermal slightly because we got some extra um, input from the geothermal system so you know each house is different um, and and I think we reached a really nice balance on this house I would wholeheartedly agree with that great hey well we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the technology here both internally and uh, what's out on the exterior on the roof. Paul again I just wanted to give you a quick run through of the solar thermal portion of the system that we've got on this home. Um, as you uh, what I'm going to do is just point out some individual components and then I'll come back and try to uh, take you through the path of, uh, of operation of the system. This is a controller, um, this is a pumping station, this is a storage tank for the solar um, uh, which we actually have energized with electricity as backup. Um, this also is a solar or is a storage tank that's being used um, to to take excess heat generated by the geothermal system and put it into the uh, domestic hot water system. Um, the whole design of this system was to try to utilize any extra uh, or alternative heating sources that we could. Um, so it's kind of a hybrid system. It's becoming more and more popular these days, but Bill uh, at High Caliber and I worked on um, trying to find the best opportunity to use solar thermal and geothermal to get the most uh, payback for the, uh, for the homeowner. Um, so what we've got here is um, I'm going to remove the cover from the pumping station and we'll look uh, in a few minutes you uh, can get a look at the collectors which are mounted on the roof on um, their evacuated tube collectors but what they are doing what we are doing is we're taking um, a fluid and circulating it through the collectives uh, this fluid is propylene glycol it's a non-toxic antifreeze uh, which of course being in Virginia we do need to use antifreeze because it's frequently below freezing outside here um, and water would damage the collectors as it froze so we use antifreeze um, and we take uh, uh, a controller, we put a sensor on the roof, which tells us what the temperature inside the solar collector is. Uh, we take a sensor and put it in the bottom of our solar storage tank, which is this sensor right here. And we simply have a pump which uh, gets uh, energized either on or off depending on the temperature differential. And so what we're looking for uh, is, is an opportunity to take heat from the collector. In other words, it has to be higher by 15 degrees at least than the temperature in the bottom of our solar tank, which is full of potable water that the homeowner might use. Um, so so our, uh, 
the the operation of of the unit will simply be that say it's 120 degrees in the collector um, it's 100 degrees in this tank those two signals come to the controller which tells the pump to turn on and so it's a loop which pushes coolant up into the collector through the top of it um, it returns back down through here enters a coil a copper coil in the bottom of the solar tank delivers the heat in other words it's 120 degree coolant but it's 100 degree water so it gives up some heat not all of it but some into the water in this tank which is going to be used by the homeowner it then exits the collector so it never I mean the uh, heat exchanger so it never actually mixes with potable water it's just all self-contained it's what we call a closed loop system it actually exits the uh, heat exchanger in the tank and comes back into the closed circuit where it returns to the collector um, this controller simply monitors those two temperatures when there's heat to be had in other words there's uh, the sun is shining um, the collectors are going to heat enough to provide um, a differential between the coolant temperature and the water in the tank and the pumps gonna keep that loop circulating uh, when it cools off either from clouds or of course at, uh, as, as the sun uh, recedes during the day or during that nighttime um, the system's simply inoperative um, so that's the that's the nuts and bolts of the solar system